Don't you hate that after switching to a secure and privacy-respecting OS like most GNU slash Linux distributions, that you end up with a browser that doesn't have the best security, privacy, and anti-fingerprinting settings? Sure, you could open up your about colon config and go through all of the settings that are in there for your version of Firefox and change them to the appropriate values. But this is a very time consuming ordeal, not to mention that the name of some of those settings are going to change with each new version of Firefox and you have to perform this configuration for each of your devices that you want to use Firefox on. You could try to install add-ons to harden your browser and enhance its privacy settings, but this of course increases the RAM and the CPU usage of your browser, plus it increases your dependence on others. You see, now if you use these add-ons, you're going to be dependent on the developers of those particular add-ons to maintain their functionality and to not become corrupt like Ghostery did when they sold whitelist passes to certain ad companies and trackers so that the users of that add-on would just have those ads and trackers be shown to them anyway uh, without their knowledge of what was going on with that company. You're dependent on them, as well as the Firefox devs and the relationship between the add-ons for the browser and the browser, because if the browser no longer supports your privacy enhancing add-ons, then you're back to square one. Also, I don't really like the whole approach of using add-ons to fix something that I see as a flaw with an application. It's like if I had a hole in my roof, Sure, I could patch it with a couple of nails, a piece of plywood, and maybe some duct tape, but I think we can all agree that wouldn't be the best way to fix it. No, the best way to fix a problem is to tackle the root of the issue and fix it that way. And there is a better way to fix it that not only hardens your browser better than about colon config and privacy add-ons combined, but it is easier and faster to deploy than these options. And that is using a custom user.js file to define your preferences. Now, maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about, so let me show you. In your, pri in your Firefox browser, in the URL bar, type about colon profiles, and you'll be brought up to a screen that looks like this. Now, I think I mentioned this in the past, but I'll reiterate it here. I strongly recommend that you use multiple profiles within your browser. The reason being is that when we enhance our privacy, a lot of web pages are going to break as a direct result of those enhancements. Because one of the more extreme steps to enhancing your privacy and security in a browser is to disable JavaScript. In case you didn't know, JavaScript is bloated and insecure and should be avoided whenever possible. But if you disable JavaScript, then streaming sites, browser-based games, and most online stores are going to be completely unusable. So maybe what you'll want to do is create one profile for more important things like planning to overthrow the government, where you implement Tor-like levels of security, or maybe you just use Tor in general for those types of activities. And then you would have a separate profile for other important activities like streaming anime. Now, you'll notice that in this list of profiles that each one has a file path to a root directory that you see right here. And this shows us some files that would basically make Firefox work. Let me go ahead and uh, open up this one here for maximum privacy. So you can see these are all of those files that are just going to be in place there. Um, yours may be slightly different, but it's fine. We're not actually going to be modifying any of these profile, any of these files that are in here. We're going to be adding another one from this GitHub repo right here, uh, ghex user.js. And there's an explanation 
of what this does in the readme that you guys can go through, but basically it's all the same things that I just explained to you, that this file defines settings for Firefox to enhance its privacy and its security. And since it's all defined into a single file, it's easy to just drop this file into a new profile on any system to automatically configure it. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and clone or download this GitHub repo here. And the only file that you actually need from it is the user.js. So you could just go ahead and drop that into whichever uh, browser profile you're using. Again, you'll probably want this to be a separate browser profile from something that you use to stream anime or whatever. And once you've got that configured, you just want to go ahead and restart Firefox. And there we go, now we have it configured. Now let's go ahead and test this new configuration that we implemented in our browser. Um, so the way that I always like to test these types of things is on this website here, uh, Panopticlick. And basically what this website does is it replicates the same exact strategies that trackers and ads would use to fingerprint you, uh, you know, keep track of your activities, figure out who you are, et cetera, et cetera. So go ahead to this website here, panopticlick.eff.org, and it'll come up with this. And then what you want to do is click on test me. And you'll want to make sure that this is checked as well. Test with a real tracking company. You know, we want this simulation to be as real as possible, right? To make sure that it's actually testing us the same way that a real tracker would. So we'll go ahead and test me. And then we have the result. So is your browser blocking tracking ads? Yes. Is your browser blocking invisible trackers? Yes. Does your browser stop trackers that include the acceptable ads whitelist? Yes. Um, does your browser unblock third parties of promise on or do not track? No, honestly with that one, I don't care too much about it. Cause it's, it's, you know, it's just your honor at the end of the day, right? Saying that you promise not to track, but some of them actually do track regardless. So I don't mind, uh, blocking them. And this is the one that's the most important to me that the, my browser has a non-unique fingerprint as a result of this configuration because in the past I've tried to spoof my user agent in a way that it would produce strings that are very, very common. Like I would pretty much try to make it look like a, um, like I was on windows, uh, using Microsoft edge, something like that, basically to try to create a, um, a, a fingerprint of what a normie would have, right? A normie's probably going to be on windows. They're probably going to be using edge or Google Chrome. Um, but this user.js has actually managed to produce one that uh, says in the past 45 days, only one in 2049.27 browsers have the same fingerprint as me. And this is a big deal. Like if you try doing this without uh, spoofing a user agent or anything else like that, chances are your fingerprint is either going to be unique or it's going to be uh, unique amongst, like, you know, it's gonna be something that's that not a whole lot of other people have, but literally everybody who's using this same uh, user.js file is going to have the same fingerprint. So that's why this is a really good way of creating a non-unique fingerprint. And all of this just prevents websites from being able to uniquely identify you. Now, before I finish this video, there is a little bit of bad news that I have about this particular configuration. The devs over at Mozilla are thinking of deprecating the user.js file functionality. And this probably won't come out in the next release of Firefox, but it is a long-term goal of theirs. And the reason behind it seems to be to reduce redundancy since the settings in user.js 
greatly overlap with the about.config settings that you can tweak manually. I really hope that the devs don't actually end up doing this, or at the very least, I hope that they implement a new functionality to define these preferences in a way that can be easily transferred from one computer to another, like the user.js file, because it can, if you've ever gone through all of the about, doc, the about colon config settings to set this up, you know it can easily take a good 10 to 20 minutes to do it. Um, so who knows what they're going to actually end up doing. There are forks of Firefox that already exist, like Waterfox, so if they decide to make the browser unusable from my perspective, then I'll be forced to switch to one of those, or I could just switch to a Chromium-based browser. Maybe I'll finally go ahead and create a tutorial for how to un-Google Chromium, because I'll be forced to use it or something similar to it. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this one, guys. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to share the video with others so that they could be helped by it as well. Leave a like, subscribe, and tick that notification bell so that you know when new content is being released.